The elections of 2024 have rumbled on and have now reached the halfway stage. Three rounds done, four to go. Half the country has voted. And some trends are being picked up by analysts and sophologists. But there's also plenty of speculation amidst jittery markets, local anti-incumbency, <clears throat> and of course, the Modi factor. But is there a central campaign theme that's emerged in the last month? From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, what are the messages that have stood out in the election campaign so far? And how do the two parties see their position at the halfway mark? We're joined on the political rumble. To answer all those questions, two very special guests, Dr. Shashi Tharoor of the Congress Party, its MB candidate from Tiruvananthapuram and three-time MP, and Swapan Das Gupta, former Rajya Sabha MP of the Bharatiya Janta Party and part of its intellectual cell. So two clear voices are joining us here on the show. We've spoken to them separately and we're going to raise the questions that matter as we enter the halfway mark of the battle for 2024. I first spoke to Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Dr. Tharoor, what, according to you, is the central narrative of this 2024 election campaign so far? There's a sense that we haven't been able to pick up a dominant theme at the moment. At times, there's talk that the Congress started off about caste census, now the BJP playing Hindu-Muslim politics, Ram on one side, Rozgar on the other. Is there a central theme, according to you, of this campaign? Well, I would say that what has happened, uh, Rajdeep, is that the BJP, which has specialized in setting the agenda of every election, national or state, for the last 10 years, has suddenly lost control of the narrative. And what you're seeing is their attempts to move away from economic issues where their has, failure has been spectacular and uh, from the alternative narrative of 2019, which was a national security narrative, which has also been a failure on the Chinese border, they decided they were going to go with the Hindutva narrative centering the campaign around the Ram Mandir and Ayodhya. Uh, and that fell flat to their own surprise because that was no longer enough. And as the India bloc came up with a series of issues centered around the well-being of the voter, mm -hmm. the Nyai concept, the five principles of collective social justice, mm -hmm. uh, suddenly you actually had an alternative narrative that was commanding the space, which is let this election, folks, be about you, the voter, about your well-being, about your life. Mm -hmm. And because the BJP didn't have an answer to that, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister and other campaigners doubled down upon the Hindutva narrative and went into this extraordinary paroxysm of inflammatory rhetoric on Hindu-Muslim issues, which I believe has been a sign of their desperation. But they've not been able to drag the election narrative back into that. The rest of us are simply, uh, I must say, recoiling in revulsion at the kind of language we're hearing from no less an eminence than our prime minister. And we are focusing on what really matters to the voter. So my answer is, the short answer is, what matters in terms of a narrative today mm -hmm. is what does this election mean to you, to you, the voter? Mm -hmm. And if it means a quest for social justice, we have the answers to that. If it means frustration about unemployment because you voted for Mr. Modi 10 years ago and he still hasn't been able to deliver you a job, then we have the answers for that. If it's frustrations about the fact that your income has dropped in the last 10 years, as 80% of Indians have, then we have the answers for that. And if indeed it is about the fundamental question of your finally asking yourselves, what has the Modi government done for you, other than give you wonderful rhetoric about Hindutva, and you can't find a good answer, then either you vote for us or you stay at home, and we're seeing examples of both in the first three phases. Yep. I think this is going to be a game-changing election, and the lack of a narrative, as you see, as you suggest, is going to lead to the day when the only narrative that matters is the exit of this government. You know, you're saying the narrative that the opposition has tried to put forward is the narrative of you, of looking at individuals, making it about individuals and get, they're getting nyai or justice. But the opposition... Uh, is also being accused of playing identity politics, Dr. Tharoor. If the BJP is accused of playing Hindutva politics, 
They are accusing the opposition of trying. Certainly the Congress and Rahul Gandhi are playing the politics of caste and identity, of suggesting Samvidhan or the constitution khatre mein hai, is in danger. If the BJP gets 400 seats, uh, your reservations will go away. So the opposition also is accused in a way of playing identity politics of their own and the politics of fear as well to an extent. I don't buy that. I mean, frankly, all that Rahul Gandhi has said on the whole question of the caste census is don't we need to understand what the picture is really within the country? I mean, ultimately, let's face it, every state and every central government institution does offer benefits or withhold benefits on the basis of your caste affiliation. Mm -hmm. That's a reality we can't get away from, and that's been the reality for many decades already. In those circumstances, surely knowing what exactly the picture is is an innocuous requirement. All he's saying is, let's take a look. I mean, the word X-ray has been distorted by our critics. The fact is, well, what he means is an X-ray shows you what the picture is inside your body. An X-ray of society will show you what the picture is inside your society. Mm -hmm. All he's talking about is, let's get a proper diagnosis. We haven't come up with a prescription yet. Depending on what the findings are, there will be a discussion in the nation, and only then will we even be in a position to do anything about that. But right now, all we've said about caste is, mm -hmm. let's know what the reality is. Who can object to that? But the prescription, Dr. Tharoor, many believe that the Congress subtly or not so subtly is offering, according to the government, is redistribution of wealth. And this has raised concerns in certain quarters that the Congress, rather than rewarding wealth creators and the middle class, is talking now of redistribution of wealth. That's a theme that the Prime Minister has picked up on. But, Rajdeep, we, we haven't said that. We haven't said that. You, you know, our critics cannot put words into our mouth. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, your, our critics cannot define for us what we stand for. Mm -hmm. The Congress Party manifesto is what we're running on, what we stand behind. I was a member of the manifesto committee, and I'm astonished by the caricaturing of that manifesto we've seen coming out of the BJP. Number one, they claim it was written by the Muslim League. The word Muslim doesn't even feature in the manifesto. Mm -hmm. Second, it talks about redistribution, they claim. The word redistribution doesn't figure in the manifesto. We've, in fact, talked about a stable, predictable tax system that will actually allow entrepreneurs to flourish in our society. So this kind of mischaracterization of what the Congress stands for or intends to do is part of the typical negative politics we have long associated with the BJP. And I'm disappointed that someone like you, Rajdeep, would fall prey to no. allowing their mischaracterizations to define your questions to us. Ask us about what we have actually said, what we have actually published in the manifesto, and we'll be very happy to answer that.